here is your lineup. On camera one, ah. On camera two, I. FDA, Danielle. F writer, Dan. And from Toronto, Canada, a graduate of Queen's College. She has a PhD in JSB. She's the reigning top queen of Lake Tahoe. She's covered the ice to the pitch and everything in between. She's a little tired today. She just shotgunned a white claw. She tried to have the staff fired last week, but she just brought pizza for the staff. At Pose, ladies and gentlemen, put your hands together. Welcome on in to Call It A Night, where we discuss the latest sports news with a bit of an edge. I'm Julie Stewart-Binks, and we're thrilled to be joined by sports broadcaster Jorge Andres. You've seen him on ESPN, CBS Sports HQ, Telemundo, and beyond. Also, owner of the rasp raspiest voice in sports. Not sick. Always sound like this. A hundred percent. A thousand percent. I love it. Right? Everybody's like, are you sick or are you 76? <laughs> One of the two. I'm like, just me. Yeah, I know. Hey, well, everyone knows it's you when you walk in. Right, exactly. And we're going to dive into Jorge's career, his foray into stand-up comedy, and we're also going to welcome in former Premier League and MLS defender Stephen Caldwell to the show. But first, let's dive into tonight's headlines. While mic'd up during Monday's game against the Patriots, Jets quarterback Sam Darnold said, I'm seeing ghosts out there. He was quickly corrected, being told, they're not ghosts, they're just booing. <laughs> Cold-blooded. Yeah, Cold they're, they're not saying boo, it's booers. That's my, that's my favorite line. Darnold was under pressure all night long with blitz after blitz. He had more men on him than Stormy Daniels. <laughs> I'm not even going to touch that. I'm yeah. not even going to touch that. Wait. Trump's not a Jets <laughs> fan, at least. Odell Beckham Jr. was fined $14,000 wearing pants that didn't cover his knees. The Browns receiver was furious after the game, saying, this probably means I can't wear my assless chaps either. <laughs> now, that would have been a headline. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I mean, there's still time, right? You never know. The Toronto Raptors opened their season by giving out the biggest championship rings ever. Each one features a 1.25 carat diamond to represent the Larry O'Brien trophy, 16 rubies for the 16 playoff wins, and a giant hole in the middle to honor the one left by Kawhi's departure. That one cut you deep? I, I'm sorry, I, I don't know who that is. Like, he's gone, like, whatever. I'm sorry, I love you, Kawhi, come back. LA-based Big Baller brand updated its website Wednesday with a redirect link to the personal website of a co-founder. It's the only place in LA that doesn't have to worry about traffic. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Mm -hmm. That's true. The Nationals beat the Astros in the first two games of the World Series. But the Astros are claiming the games never happen and the box score is a hit piece on the team. <laughs> <laughs> Yikes. Juan Soto made history by becoming the youngest player ever to homer, double, single, and steal a base. Beast. What's even more impressive is that he did it after missing his nap time. <laughs> He's just a widow baby. He's just a, He's a baby. widow baby. He's a widow baby. <laughs> After game one, Max Scherzer said of the Astros, quote, that lineup is great. They absolutely grinded me. Although he may have been confusing it with the post-game celebration at the strip club. <laughs> Trip Club shows. France has released the logo for the 2024 Summer Games featuring a woman's face with a pixie cut. The announcement confirms France is still finding itself after the divorce. <laughs> This will be France's first time hosting the Summer Olympics since 1924, and they famously lit the torch with a cigarette. <laughs> Fantastic. Yeah, that's Fantastic. the headlines, baby. And the print it. <laughs> All right, we're rolling along on this fresh epi of Call It A Night. Don't go anywhere. Jorge and I talk sports, comedy, and finish each other's. What? Next. <laughs> Welcome back to Call Tonight. We've got sports 
broadcaster and comedian Jorge Andres on the couch now. Jorge, you've worked at ESPN, CBS, NBC, Telemundo, all over the place. Everywhere. What are you up to now? Uh, so a couple of things. Well, number one, I got married this summer. Congratulations. Yep. Yeah, that was wow. good. It was a lot. Yeah. Our old battle axe named Wendy. <laughs> yeah. First movie, two <laughs> rotten dogs. No, I love my wife. She's great. <laughs> but uh, that took a lot of my time and money. Um, yeah. <laughs> number yeah. two, I've been working on a new project. I've been working a book. Actually, very um, opposite to what I usually do. I usually, uh, you know, comedy, lighthearted, yeah. this and that. This a little bit different take. Uh, profile the guy out in Mendocino, California. Um, you relate to it, I relate to it. I'm an immigrant. I was born in Peru. Uh, Canadian. He was an immigrant. And uh, just kind of teaching more of the immigration system okay. in the U.S. A lot of people are wow. not as educated in it. Um, so I found his story really interesting. It's probably as much as I can say right now. But right, and is it, uh, it's a book? Yeah, it's a book. Oh, mm -hmm. okay, great. Profiling him and his family are huge uh, strides that they made in that system, overcoming that system right, and yeah. whatnot. So. Yeah, you're right. A lot of people, I mean, we, we don't necessarily know too much about it, especially right. if you haven't gone through it. Exactly. So. I feel like if you don't know somebody, you don't know. Yeah, well, that's that's nice to, to have a different project after doing so much yes. in sports. Nice mm -hmm. to kind of branch out. Now, you mentioned comedy, and that's something that we bonded over. Yeah. We both did stand-up. Do, have you been back on stage at all? Do you have any plans to go back out? Yeah, so there's actually the Money Waters Comedy Club in South Florida. Uh, they do shows every other week. It's fantastic. I've been doing a lot of shows there. Uh, Miami Beach Improv opened up a year ago, almost, in December. It's going to be the one-year anniversary. Bob Saget opened up there to open the whole thing. They're having a huge festival and celebration that I'll be a part of. And uh, and then in Palm Beach, I'm based out of Miami, so in Palm Beach, the Palm Beach Improv yeah. as well. So what's, like, what's your shtick? Like, what do you like to <laughs> joke about? Uh, mostly, like... <laughs> Common day things. Yes, I like, mean <laughs> people like like the most r random thoughts. Like sometimes you sit there and you're like, well, in Miami, for example, uh, you know, not the I get it now why they say you know Florida man this, Florida man that. Not the brightest people, you know. Yeah, like, we, got, we got Todd there yeah, on yeah. camera from Florida. Yeah, 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 yeah. He was just like, what? Yeah. <laughs> but that's what I'm talking about. So it's very easy in Florida. Right. So you kind play of play to that crowd. Them. Play to that play crowd. To the... Depends on what crowd. Yeah. You know, I mean, previously my a lot of my jokes were you know being single. Yeah. Uh, now a lot of my jokes are being do you, married. Do you just like bring them back? Like I mean, the crowd doesn't need to know you're you're married. Right. right. Like, no. It's no. A good joke. It's a good joke. Uh, true. But I had that conversation with my wife. I was like, so, like, this Tinder joke was hilarious. Yeah. She was like, no. Uh, I was like, okay, what about you not there? Mm -hmm. She's like, no. And I'm like, okay, so it's like a battle. You're like, maybe don't come. I'll yeah. just keep my old material. Right? Yeah, I like to have ones about dating a guy in the apartment below mine. Uh, my boyfriend now is like, what, like apartment B something? I remember yeah, yeah, that Brian though. from 1S. Yes. Yeah, it was a good it. joke. So you gotta keep it. Keep it I'm telling time. you, I'm telling you, it's, um, it's good, but you gotta, you know. So then happy wife, happy you, wife. you decided to do um, comedy and, and you found it helped you on air. A thousand percent. In, in what way, like for people that don't kind of understand, they, they would be scared of it. Like in what way did it help you? So, you know, everybody that starts in television and whatnot and does television, a camera can be intimidating, this and that, piece of cake. Nothing can be more intimidating <laughs> than an entire crowd right there. Yeah. Because if we mess up, maybe a couple of people are going to be like, oh man, they suck. But if you mess up on the comedy stage, there's a good two, three hundred people oh, yeah. that are like, oh boy, get this guy out. Yeah. So that really like helps you kind of just let go and mm -hmm. let loose. And then the biggest part, writing. Everybody, until I got into comedy, nobody, I never knew that like, oh, they write everything. Everything is timed and delivered, the cadence, everything mm -hmm. to hit that punchline. And when you go to watch ESPN or CBS or NBC, you see some anchors, they do a lead, and you're like, oh, that guy's funny. I wonder why, because he's a good writer. Mm -hmm. uh, it's all about writing. He, it's all about writing, and it just helps so much. Okay, well, speaking of words and writing and improv, we're going to play a little game <laughs> called uh, Finish Each Other's. And I, huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah, yeah. There we go. Uh, I'm gonna say part of a sentence, okay. and then I need you to finish it. Initial right. first thought, okay? All right, let's go. When LeBron James talks about China, it makes me jump off a bridge. <laughs> oh, that's more than one word. <laughs> in a good or bad way? Oh, in a bad way. Okay, yeah. All right. All right, my turn. Not me. Oh, this is a good one. Oh no. This season, the Toronto Raptors are going to. 
uh, be on a revenge tour. They're gonna, they've forgotten about Kawhi. You see Kyle Lowry barely even mentioned him the other night in the championship. They're actually gonna do better. It's like, um, oh, okay. you know, revenge body, X. Who cares about him? <laughs> uh, I don't revenge know who body, he is, yeah. yes. <laughs> I like it. Okay, um, my first thought when Kawhi, that Leonard signed with the Clippers was? Oh, cold-blooded. Oh, cold-blooded, how you gonna yeah, do that? We're on a little Kawhi <laughs> rant here right now. Yeah, we're she's not wearing red you. or anything. Uh, one more. All right, here we go. My worst nightmare <laughs> is being stuck on a desert island with? Don't um, say me. Um, um, with, with, uh, like, uh, uh, poo? I don't know. <laughs> Nobody likes caca, nobody. The big pile of poo, that's all I got that's with no booze. Worst. Okay, that, yeah, thank you, that. JB, help me with that one. I need a producer in these moments. Okay, well, this has been a lot of fun on Finish Each Other's. <laughs> on that note, let's put our money where our mouth is. Okay. Our buddies at FanDuel are celebrating the sports equinox this weekend, which means all major sports leagues will play at least one game. They're running a free-to-play game where if you pick 20 of the 26 games correctly on October 27th, you'll get a cut of the prize, which is a quarter of a million dollars. It's a lot of money, lots. Jorge, if you could watch only one game from every sport, what would it be? This weekend? Yes, and you this have weekend, them all this... memorized. Ah, here we go. I would go Lakers just because I, I want to see the beginning of some sort of chemistry given, you know, they got oh, the yeah. Jazz, they got the Clippers. I want to see that between LeBron and LeBron, NBA-wise. Uh, Columbus, NHL-wise. Oh, yeah, uh, can't look. miss the old BJs. Well, <laughs> look, Blue I'm jackets, not... folks, okay? <laughs> Never miss the BJs. Um, I'm telling you, <laughs> uh, I'm a DC guy, Capitals. Uh, they had a little bit of a hangover, probably still, mm -hmm. from when they won, so I want to yeah, see... Knowing how they party. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, who drinks? Uh, I want to see how Columbus does on that, and uh, Nationals, hopefully there won't be a Game 5. Mm -hmm. There'll be a Game 5. Mm -hmm. But hopefully there won't be a Game 5. And uh, what am I missing? Oh, NFL. So my wife is a psych psychopath, Buffalo Bills fan. Yeah. Oh, great. And uh, we're going to Buffalo. She's Bills Mafia. Bills Mafia. Are you going to jump through a so table? We're, we're going to Buffalo, and we're going to the Eagles-Bills game. And I've never been to a Bills game. So um, rest in peace, all right? Yeah, it's gonna get <laughs> gonna get real ratchet this weekend oh, with your ratchet. lovely new wife. All right, thank you so much, Jorge. This has been so much fun. Uh, come back anytime. Remember right. to it's BYOB here on the show. Okay, don't go anywhere. We've got former Newcastle legend, current sports broadcaster Stephen Caldwell in the building next on Call It a Night. back. We're moving up in the world. We've got two guests on the show today. We've got former Premier League soccer player, current TV analyst on TSN, Stephen Caldwell. You are in town covering MLS playoffs yes. last night. TFC, the team that you cover, beat NYCFC. Take that, Cooligans. Uh, <laughs> Toronto forever. Um, so now TFC moves on, either faces Atlanta or yeah. Philly. How do you see the East playing out this year? The East has been difficult to predict this year, Julie. It has been a little bit strange. I think that TFC came in with, with moderate expectations. I'm sure in the change room they, they thought they'd do well, but with, in our opinion, it was, you know, touch and go, especially <laughs> in that first game when they ended up getting the whole match against DC United, but they're starting to build up momentum. They're playing some good stuff, so they'll feel confident now. I think everyone's hoping for that. Atlanta, the neutrals are hoping oh, yeah. for an Atlanta TFC Eastern Conference final. That'll be quite a... Uh, tantalizing match. Yeah, that'd be great. And then also you have now in the West, Seattle be RSL yeah. and El Trafico, which everyone's yeah. very excited about. What do you what do you see happening in, in the West? Do you think LAFC yeah. can win the Shield and then also make it win MLS Cup? Yeah, I think the favourites. I think they're the best side. It's just where they can keep their cool. They get the bits of luck that are needed when the playoffs happen. Uh, I think there's a little bit of a, a blip there just a few weeks ago, but they seem to have rode that storm and they're back to back to their best mm -hmm. or somewhere near their best. They're such an exciting team to watch. Yeah. When they get the ball in the wide areas to Diego Rossi and, and obviously Carlos Vela, they look, they look devastating. Well, we were just discussing how it's a different playoff format this year. It's the single yeah. elimination. It's not the home and away with the FIFA break that broke things up before. How has What, what role has this playoffs played in, in just how things have now transpired? Yeah, it's weird. It's I mean, the reason is because of these international breaks, for anyone who doesn't know, it's to try and 
condense the playoff structure in between the October international break and, and the November one. So that's why I went to single game eliminations. I don't love it as much. It doesn't allow momentum to build mm -hmm. the same way as it did before with the, you know, I think probably the best two leg game in MLS history was Toronto FC against Montreal. That Impact. was wild. Yeah, in yeah, 16. We did. I did it was that incredible, one. Yeah. wasn't yeah. it? With the rain at, at BMO Field in Toronto and the lines and, and the big O, remember the lines when oh, they yeah, measured yeah, them yeah. wrong and it was ridiculous, wasn't it? So we, we missed the moments, but it's still been pretty exciting and we've got to try and make the regular season more relevant mm -hmm. in MLS and the best way to do that is to give bigger importance to where you finish and, and this does that because it allows you to stay at home if you, you finish right. in the league. Because the thing was it almost felt like as if teams just went on a run near the end of the season. Yeah. Even if you just were okay, you could still win MLS Cup. Seattle showed us that, Portland yeah. showed us that one year. Now you've, you've been a player, you were captain of TFC, now you're a broadcaster. If you were... Don Garber, MLS commissioner, <laughs> what would be something you would change? What would I change about MLS? Uh, I'd, I'd make it only grass pitches, 100%. Mm -hmm. Proper turf, not not this artificial stuff. I don't like it at all. I'd try, and I know MLS are, are doing this, but to make it you know, soccer-specific stadiums, it definitely helps. We played uh, the game, it was at City Field last right. night, you know, and you saw the difficulties that, that that brings playing in a baseball stadium. It's probably slightly better than Yankee Stadium, but the dimensions are wrong. It's kind of like vertigo. I remember it's talking hard to, Clint, to call, Clint isn't Clint it? Derwin, yeah. the goalkeeper for TFC before, and he just said, it, you know, it's yeah. hard. Because the stadium's different. Well, size. the guys say they're backing off, expecting the ball, and before they know it, they're, they're out the field. It's it's hard to kind of work out because usually you use the, the stands as a reference, but it's a nightmare to call as well because you're behind home plate. So that far corner uh, at the end of the ballpark's like, you don't know who's <laughs> who. you got to look at your little 15-inch screen at that moment. So, uh, yeah, soccer-specific stadiums and pitches for sure must be grass. And, and finally, before I move on, just you've played so many places overseas in... In, uh, championship and Premier yeah. League and all over and then now being in, in covering MLS so much what's something you would tell people across the pond that they wouldn't know about MLS that maybe they would turn up their nose to but that you want them to know yeah I think in 2013 there was less uh, coverage and knowledge of MLS when I first came to, to Toronto but since then there's been really big developments Sky Sports show mm -hmm. uh, game of the week at least mm -hmm. they have a highlights package so most most players and most people know about MLS now. I think there's still that stigma about American sports. Yeah. And I, I, to us in the UK, it's it's really strange to think you know you play 34 games and then it goes into a playoff format and anybody can pick up the the trophy. I, I can't see that changing. Yeah. It's do North you, do you like sport. the playoff format as like uh, a purist? You know. No, I, I don't. Who does? You know, it's when you play. I mean, Americans do. Yeah. They like that, you know, they running. They like sitting around the TV. I think it's a TV thing. I think it's building up the momentum. But when you've put in six, seven, eight, nine months of effort and then all of a sudden you're back to the start and, you, you know, you've got to win three or four more games to be the champions, uh, you can see why people get a bit disappointed. Now, I mean, obviously I'm wearing my, my tartan for you. I love it. I was going to mention so I'm, that. I'm Scottish, you know, um, obviously, <laughs> if you can tell by my accent. Uh, but you are, of course. Yeah. Uh, what, what's a word that people hear you say that they just, like, they can't understand? Oh, I, I'm changing. I'm becoming very Canadian. Oh, okay. Everyone probably thinks I'm still very broad Scottish. But if I speak like this to my friends, they'll be like, why are you talking really funny? I'm, I'm speaking <laughs> really? extremely slow here to try and... What uh, kind of Canadianisms have you picked up? Well, Canadian, North American, I don't know what it is. Yeah. I just have to slow down a little <laughs> bit and try and pronunciate some words. I'd Less slang than I used to be. You know, head, I would say heed. And, oh. Uh, I don't know, I can't really think right now. I'm, I'm really changing. But you just slow it down. Yeah, I slow it down and just try and be a bit more... Bit more. Uh, it is hard because your your ears words. not tuned to hearing that accent ever. <laughs> my I, my family it's when they talk, it's just like yeah, nobody yeah, understands me. No it's okay. <laughs> yeah, right. They're like, yeah. I think he's doing okay. He seems to be talking about the game. Uh, now, of course, we could not have you here without. Uh -huh exploiting this accent oh, for our go. TV goodness. Okay. And there's a number of iconic sports rants yeah. that coaches have gone on in the past. Right. Americans specifically. And we okay. thought it would be fun to have you do them in your super Scottish okay. accent that you have. And Sounds good. let's start off right. with, we have got um, a 1981 Wimbledon, John McEnroe. Right, okay. Okay, here we go. The ball. Chalk came up all over the ball. Excuse me. 
You can't be serious, man. You cannot be serious. That ball was on the line. Chop flew up. It was clearly in. How can you possibly call that out? How many are you going to miss? Gonna, that's not Scottish. He's walking <laughs> over. Everyone knows it's in this whole stadium when you call it out. Explain that to me, will you? The chalk came up. It doesn't matter. Very <laughs> good job. I like to be as yeah. passionate as John. I love it. I, I love it. it. All right. Well, we're not done yet, obviously. <laughs> um, we are now going to do, I believe this is Mike Gundy yep. from 2007. Right. Mike Gundy. Well, Famous tirade. Here we go. That's why I don't read the newspaper, because it's garbage. And the editor that let it come out is garbage. Attacking an amateur athlete for doing everything right. Are you kidding me? Where are we at in society today? Come after me. I'm a man. I'm 40. <laughs> I'm 39, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I like how you're just like, yeah, I'm 40. You know? <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Okay, we've got one more right. on this. Actually, we might be having more than that. Uh, this is, uh, excuse me, can you tell me again? 2006 Cardinals coach Dennis Green. Okay, here we go. The Bears are what we thought they were. They're what we thought they were. We played them in preseason. Who the hell takes a third game of the preseason like it's bullshit? <laughs> bullshit. We played them in the third game. Everybody played three quarters. The Bears are who we thought they were. That's why we took the damn field. Now, if you want to crown them, then crown their ass. But they are who we thought they were, and we let them off the hook. The hook. The hook. We let them off the hook. I love that. Uh, OK, so. Yes, 2011 Coastal Carolina coach Dave Bennett. We're just going to okay. kind of keep on going okay. until we're told not to. This one looks different. <laughs> OK. I turn and look. There's a little kitty cat in our, in our kitchen. <laughs> cat starts going meow, all crazy. And I told our players, we need to have more dogs. So I told our players, I tried to let it out the front door. Meow. The cat's still going crazy in there. And I told our players, you need to be more like a dog. We don't need a bunch of cats in here. Meow, looking in the mirror. I look good. I got my extra bands on. I got my other shoes. Be a dog. We don't need no meows. We don't need no cats. We need more dogs. There you have it. Everyone needs to have a Scottish accent when getting upset at that. It's I love the R's, right? Yeah. Tapped R's. Rolling R's. Yeah. Rolling R's. Yeah. Um, yeah. I want. Can we just no? Okay. <laughs> Can we play more accents? Okay, all right. Thank you so much, nice Stephen, for being a great Pleasure. sport with the accents and all of your MLS knowledge. Um, we are going to be back with a whole lot more on Call It a Night. You don't want to go anywhere. We are rocking and rolling here on Fubo Sports Network. I'm Tim Doyle, and I had to call it a night. Watching tonight, we've had an awesome time with broadcaster Jorge Andres and former soccer player and current analyst Stephen Caldwell. Make sure to follow along on an exciting MLS playoffs. And next show, we welcome SNY NBA insider Ian Begley to the program to dish the dirt on all of your favorite stars. But for now, we're going to call it a night.